Hello, welcome back to the shed. I wanted to have a quick look um, at lightweight wheels on a bike. When I bought my new Fireblade, it came with Marchensini forged magnesium wheels. Obviously the seller intended to use it on a track, but are they really worth it? Are they worth it on the road? Are they worth it on the track? And what does that difference in weight actually equate to? So this is a short video to use a bit of science and hopefully find out. Thanks for watching. So why are light wheels so important? Because with today's modern superbikes um, being so powerful, improved handling is now worth considerably more to a lap time than additional power. According to MotoGP engineers, um, the bikes now spend as little as 2% of their lap time on full throttle, which is the only time where power alone can really affect a lap time. For example, the stock wheels on my Fireblade that I'm looking at here, um, the stock wheels weigh in at around 10.73 kilograms for the pair. The Marchensini forged uh, magnesium wheels that are on it now for the pair weigh about seven kilograms, which is a saving of just over three kilograms last time I checked. But does it matter where mass is located on the bike. Does it take more energy to increase speed if you put the mass on the wheel or on the bike or both? Well, first of all, let's look at the mass uh, on the frame of the bike. If I add something to the frame, the total mass of the bike increases. This means that I would need um, more work to increase the kinetic energy. And that's pretty straightforward physics. In this case, that's more power, and more power means more fuel and more air. So if we look at some of the effects um, of extra mass on a bike and uh, see what happens there. So if we look at, for example, air resistance. So to ride along at a constant velocity, all opposing forces must equal zero. Of course, um, there is the gravitational force pulling the bike down and the road pushing back up. But there is also air drag force, which obviously pushes against the direction of motion. Stick your hand out of a fast moving car window. <laughs> and you'll soon see the faster you go, the greater the force on your hand. Um, but what happens to air drag force uh, if I add mass to my bike? If the added mass doesn't change the shape or the cross-sectional area of the bike, the force remains the same. Um, air drag or air resistance force doesn't depend on the mass of an object. Actually, in terms of air drag, extra mass can actually help. Suppose you have two bikes that look the same side by side, but they've both got different masses. If they're traveling at the same speed, they will have the same air resistance or the same force on them. However, this force will produce a greater change in the speed on the bike with less mass. Don't forget that a net force is equal to the produce of mass and acceleration. Same force, but different masses means different accelerations. So the lighter mass or the lighter rider or the lighter force would therefore slow down first. But what about rolling friction? If you accelerate on your bike and then you coast, the bike slows and then the bike stops. This would occur even without air resistance. Aside from engine braking and various other frictional forces um, as a wheel rests, the part of the tyre touching the ground compresses and deforms. Um, when the wheel turns, that section of tyre 
being compressed changes. So the constant compression and relaxation requires energy and this is called rolling friction. If you add more mass to the frame then the tyre is compressed further resulting in a greater rolling friction. But how about if you put the mass on the tyre, not on the frame? The same thing happens, but you could argue that the effect isn't as great if the mass is evenly distribu uh, distributed. Well, that's easy for you to say. Around the wheel. Then a part of this mass will be in contact uh, on the contact point and not really push down on the bike. And this might be true, but the effect would actually be tiny. Um, an increase in speed means an increase in kinetic energy. And since the kinetic energy depends on both mass of an object and its velocity, more mass would mean more energy to speed up. Unfortunately, energy for us motorcyclists on our bikes, when we talk about kinetic energy, means more air, more fuel. But does it matter where this mass is located? Does it take more energy to increase your speed if you put the mass on the wheel or on the frame? Or is it the same? Well, actually, yes, it does take more energy if it's on the wheel. First, let's look at the mass on the frame of the bike. If I add mass to the frame, the total mass of the bike increases. This means I would need more work to increase the kinetic energy. Again, that's pretty straightforward. But what if the extra mass is on the wheel? In that case, I must do two things to increase my speed. I must increase my kinetic energy and I must increase my rotational kinetic energy of the wheel. And those two are different. If all of the mass is on the wheel, if all of the mass on the wheel is located on the rim, I can write the rotational kinetic energy as kinetic energy um, rotational is equal to half mass of the wheel times a radius squared times angular velocity squared. In this expression, mw is the mass of the wheel, r is the radius of the wheel, and omega is the angular velocity of the wheel. But if the wheel is rolling and not slipping, then there is a relationship between the angular speed of the wheel and the linear speed of the bike. This is how a car speedometer works, or at least the way that it used to work. In this expression, if I substitute in for omega, I can write the following for total kinetic energy of the bike, and that would be the translational kinetic energy plus the rotational kinetic energy.
If the translational kinetic energy, mb, is the total mass of the bike, including the wheels, but the rotational kinetic energy only depends on the mass of the wheels. So what does all of this mean? Well, using the formulas that we've just described, let's say I add three kilograms to the frame of my bike. This would increase the value of MB, which is the mass of the bike, but it wouldn't increase the mass of the wheel under acceleration. The translational kinetic energy would increase by some amount and it would require more energy to accelerate or increase my kinetic energy. But let's add three kilograms to the wheel, increasing the mass of the wheel. Since the wheel is part of the bike, this means that the total mass also increases mb, which is mass of the bike. Both translational and rotational kinetic energy terms will have a three kilogram increase in mass. Therefore, you have to double the increase in energy required to accelerate by adding extra mass to the wheel. Minimum size ain't cheap. So yes, adding mass to the wheel is worse than adding mass to the frame, but only when accelerating. Still, every little bit helps. What happens when a wheel's rotational mass reduces? Well, depending on who you are, your bike should flick a little easier into corners. The same can be said on corner exits. While picking the bike up from a full lean angle, you don't have to weight the outside peg as much. This allows you to get the meatier part of the tyres quicker, which means throttle sooner. Deceleration also improves, which means braking later and further through a corner. <laughs> However, various videos online clearly show that when performing back-to-back -back comparisons with stock OEM aluminium wheels and the Marchensini wheels, both wheels shod with some Bridgestone uh, S20 rubber, the lap times only improved by a few tenths of a second. So, not really worth it then. Well, the science says yes. The science says that lightweight wheels are a massive advantage because any loss in unsprung and rotating weight is worth several times its actual physical weight because it has a massive effect on handling. By fitting lighter wheels you will reduce rotational inertia which improves both acceleration and braking. You will reduce gyroscopic inertia, which enables turning in quicker um, with less effort and flick through chicanes with more ease. You will reduce unsprung weight, which improves grip and traction and reduces tyre wear. All of those lead to improved handling and most importantly, reduced rider fatigue. Less weight, less effort. Of course, all of that only applies if your second name is Rossi and you have an afternoon at Magello at your disposal. Take the average rider, me, the average pothole road out there, the average weather here in sunny Wales and the ever increasing amount of traffic. Then to me, for my bike on the roads, a forged magnesium wheel is about as much use as a handbrake on a canoe. And my wallet is really gonna feel much lighter as a result. Obviously a top choice for the smooth track, sure. Some even shy away from using magnesium wheels on the street due to their durability um, potholes etc but some uh, magnesium wheels are cast and some are forged so be sure to know what you're looking for. Some choose aluminium wheels for increased strength however when magnesium wheels are manufactured correctly they can last the lifetime of a bike. So 
In conclusion, the science says removing mass from the wheel is going to require much less energy to accelerate than removing it from the frame. Double, in fact. Is it worth it for the road? Well, I'll let you decide. But whatever wheels you choose, please ride safe. Yeah.